Welcome to Dead Man Talking. Tonight's story is part two in a series entitled Do We Really Know What's in the Woods? Let's get straight into that. Hi everyone, sorry it has taken me so long to write the next instalment but things have been, well, interesting around here lately. But that's a story for another day. Let's get back to why you're here. So, after taking off like a bat out of hell and reaching a place where I felt safe, I made two calls. The first was to Jake. I needed to warn him so that neither he nor anyone else would go out to those woods. I wasn't sure exactly what to say. It's not exactly a standard script for, Hi, yeah, I think I saw a monster in your woods. Stay out. Well, there wasn't a script where I could say that I that and sound sane. Anyways, fortunately, Jake didn't answer, so I left him a voicemail asking him to give me a call later and not to let anyone out there until he talks to me. My second call was to Anna. It goes without saying that Anna's not her actual name. Anna and I were old college friends and many years ago occasional lovers. She worked for Fish and Wildlife as a conservation officer near the region that I was hunting in. I knew, with it being opening weekend of deer seasoning, deer season, that she would be swamped. But to my surprise, she said she could meet me for a latte breakfast at a nearby dinner. After we exchanged pleasantries and ordered, Anna stared at me for a few moments, studying my face. I could tell that she saw something that bothered her. James, what's going on? As you know, my name probably isn't James. I don't even know where to begin, I said, trying to figure out where to start. Well, the beginning's usually a good place, she mused, which made me smile despite my nerves. The coffee cup shook as I went to take a drink, and the flick of her gaze told me she saw that too. Anna was incredibly observant, and she always has been. I need you to promise me that you won't write me off as crazy. Hell! Better yet, scratch that. Tell me I'm crazy and take me down to the state hospital so they can pump me full of Thorazine or something. Because I'm telling you, Anna, either I'm losing it or something really... My voice started to break and I paused, breathing heavily. Now, I'm not a crier and I can probably count on one hand how many times I have truly cried in my life. But it took everything this big lug had in him to stop from losing it. Seeing something like what I saw is viscerous and terrifying. It never leaves you. Ever. I still see it when I close my eyes. Anna reached across the table and took my hand. I gathered my nerves and proceeded to recount everything from this morning. From the time I walked into the woods that morning until calling her. To her credit, she listened to all without interruption. Okay, so let's go back to what you saw, James. Describe that for me again like we had when we took memology, she said, taking out her notepad. Well, it altered between bipedal and quadrupedal. Its fur was dark brown and matted. Eyes were deep set and I shuddered. Intelligent. Oh, and the teeth, definitely carnivorous and set in an elongated snout. Anna nodded put the paper down and looked at me. She had compassion in her eyes, so I didn't know if she believed me or not. If I had to venture a guess, Jim, I think you may have seen a brown bear. I started to say something, but she shushed me with a look. Now, I know they aren't even remotely indigenous to the area, but that doesn't stop people from owning them. Just last year, we found two panthers that had escaped from their owner and were prowling the woods adjacent to a school. So it's entirely possible. Brown bears have been sighted in Kentucky before. But it was so fast, and that smell, I said, and Anna nodded. Bears are a lot quicker than people realise. 
and they aren't known for their great hygiene, Jim. He had probably been chewing on a carcass or something. I nodded, but that's when it struck me. Okay, but riddle me this, Sherlock. How could a bear pluck the bullet from its hide, open my truck door, place it in my passenger seat, take one of my undershirts, and leave? She seemed to consider this for a moment, before finally shrugging. Hell if I know. Do you still have the bullet? I do. All right, how about this? Let me take the bullet and I'll send it over to the university under the radar to have one of my contacts there run some tests on it. They should be able to tell me exactly what you hit. She smiled. I nodded. I assume I should tell Jake to keep people out of the woods until then. Anna seemed to think about that for a second before saying, I would hold off on that. The last thing I need is for him to spread that rumour and end up with a bunch of grizzly hunters out in these woods during deer season. So let's just keep this between us for now, okay? I left feeling a little better, but the issue of the bullet still lingered in my mind. When I got home, I did what I think just about anyone went th who went through this would have done. I proceeded to batten down the proverbial hatches. I lived somewhere between the suburbs and the country. It's faux rural, lots of trees separating the houses with little patches of dense woods here and there, but not true wilderness. Curb and a lot of appeal, as the realtors, realtors say. I went through and checked all my windows and doors and made sure that my guns were easily reachable. To say I was spooked was an understatement. I was fucking rattled to my core. I almost had a heart attack when my phone rang. The caller ID popped up as Jake. About time, dude. Where you been? Jake didn't respond. Instead, I only heard heavy breathing on the other end of the phone. Like the kind of breathing someone does when they are deeply contemplating something. Dude, this shit isn't funny. Not after the day I've had, I said, trailing off. The heavy breathing continued, and I heard what sounded like someone smacking their lips. The way an old person does after taking a drink of something. That was followed by a contemplative sigh, and then the phone line went dead. My hand was trembling as I tried to dial Jake's number again. He answered on the first ring. Hey man, what's going on? He asked, sounding nonplussed, his usual self. I was about to yell at him for pulling that stunt when something caught my attention. The last vestiges of twilight had faded, turning the night over to darkness. Something was standing in my backyard, outside of the range of the back porch light. A howl pierced the silence of the night and the shadow moved, disappearing into the darkness. As you will see in the next couple of installments, my truck did not fare too well and I need a new car. If you enjoy the story of my plight and wouldn't mind clicking on the link below to throw a quick vote my way, no registration of any of that crap, just click vote with Audible. I would greatly appreciate it. Wow. Hope you guys enjoyed this story. I certainly did. I'm hoping there will be another instalment. I love to keep my eyes uh, peeled for that, guys, and let you know as soon as I know it will be uploaded to the channel. Please do let me know what you think, guys, down below in the comments. Of course, please do share. Please do like. If you haven't subscribed to DMT, smash that subscribe button and join the family. Your support is more than welcome, and I really do appreciate it. Hope you've had a fantastic day or evening, guys. And remember... Be safe, not sorry.